Right now on Secrets of Louisville Chefs, we're in Kitchen Studio at Bourbon Barrel Foods, sharing the secrets and making some of the dishes from one of Louisville's best restaurants. The name John Veronese from Veronese Restaurant may ring a bell. More bacon the better here. He's joining us and he's going to reveal his secrets to bacon wrapped tenderloin with bourbon sorghum chutney. Hmm, <laughs> doesn't that sound good? Plus soy glazed ahi tuna that you can make at home when you learn the secrets from the chef. We're also going to jazz up the classic Manhattan. Here's the special. Chief Entertaining Officer Tim Laird will show us what goes in the shaker for that. We do everything. Big. It'll be a lot of fun, so grab a seat and get ready to get hungry. I'm Kevin Harnett, and this is Secrets of Louisville Chefs. studio here at Bourbon Barrel Foods. I'm Kevin Harnett and this is Secrets of Louisville Chefs. This is the show that takes you on an inside look at some of the area's best restaurants as they reveal their secrets to making the same dishes so you can do it at home. In fact, this time we're excited to have the owner, chef, and namesake of Frankfurt Avenue's Veronese. John Veronese is regarded as one of the city's best chefs and the popularity of his restaurant is a testament to that. He's known for the Mediterranean style cooking, but he uses local ingredients to create a fusion of flavors and right now it's time to introduce not only the chef but the host of our show Tim Laird and John Veronese. <laughs> Thank you Kevin. Wow. John so so happy to have you with us again. I, I'll tell you a veteran of the show uh, many times. Re really great to be here for for the first time in uh, Bourbon Barrel Foods uh, studio kitchen and it's a beautiful I know, place. Isn't they this gorgeous? Such a great I love job. this studio. It's so, so warm. warm. Warm audience. We have a nice bistro style to it. I love it. And of course we always love what you do at the restaurant. It's such a wonderful place. I'll tell you you've you really taken that space and just expanded it to something absolutely gorgeous all the time. No matter where you sit you really feel comfortable whether at the bar or one of the tables and of course, you have the jazz music going, uh, so it's a wonderful experience. And uh, and of course, your menu changes too, right, John? Yeah, we uh, create nightly specials, about a, a dozen rest, uh, different items that change uh, uh, every couple of days and keep it fresh and exciting and uh, whatever is local or um, kind of hot uh, on the market right there, just something different to play with. So what are we going to start with uh, today? All right, you know, a lot of this stuff was uh, inspired to me by... Uh, um, Matt Jamie and Bourbon Barrel Foods, so uh, I thought to honor him using a, a lot of his products today. Not only wonderful products, but also keeping it local, so yes, which I definitely. love. So we're starting with his, uh, what has made him famous, his bluegrass soy sauce. And uh, we're going to kind of make something traditional um, style like Blanc, but uh, we're changing it up a little bit. So I'm going to take some of the soy sauce first and I'm going to uh, reduce it a little bit to get it concentrated. We're also going to put a little bit of heavy cream. Of course, that beurre blanc, a uh, chef term for like a uh, white sauce with butter. Well, butter sauce, you know, traditionally what you would do is take a, a acid, vinegar, wine, reduce it down with some herbs uh, to get that flavor, and uh, you would whisk in butter. Um, my little secret to kind of uh, help balance this is that I put a little bit of heavy cream. The next part of uh, this dish here, why this is uh, reducing, is we're going to do uh, some pickled mushrooms. So I'm going to start off a little bit of uh, rice wine vinegar here. So this is going to be pickling your, your own mushrooms, basically. Yep, pickling my own mushrooms. We have uh, some shiitakes. We're going to do a little salad for a garnish here um, when it's done. So a little sugar goes in with your uh, vinegar? Rice vinegar. And then we're going to add uh, some of this uh, burn barrel smoked sea salt along with the pepper. And then we just want to whisk this in to help dissolve it. Or get the sugar to kind of dissolve in here. By the way, John, I'll tell you what, this is smelling great. That soy sauce reducing down with that cream. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's, it's, it's getting there. First, we'll put in our shiitake mushrooms. I love shiitakes too. You know, it, it, I mean, they have such a unique flavor to it, real earthy, uh, but really full flavor. And a great texture to it. It has a little bit of almost a kind little of sponginess bite too. To it. Yeah. And, you know, this is really good because it's going to be a raw preparation. We don't have to cook it. Uh, we're going to add in just a little bit of a fresh chopped scallion or green onion or green onion whatever you want to call same, it right it's, it's the same how long does it take to actually what you say pickle um you know probably about 10 15 minutes that's it all could be up great to, to a day okay uh, you don't want to let it sit too long because it'll start to break down the mushrooms and uh, become a little mushy while that's working is that i have some uh, nice hawaiian 
Oh. Sushi grade number one wow. tuna here. I'm gonna start off in this uh, pan over here with a little bit of sesame oil. Also, I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, vegetable oil in here. The reason I do that is because sesame oil could be a little overpowering and uh, I don't wanna use as much, so we're using a half and half. Another reason that you use the sesame oil too, it has a higher flash point, so you could uh, uh, cook at higher temperatures without the oil burning up, and that's really good when you're searing stuff. It's very important to have uh, that really hot pan. And what you look for is that, that the first the oil will start to um, break up a little bit, it'll, it'll spread out in the pan, and then it'll start to give a little bit of smoke off in that pan. And when you see that light smoke is when you wanna uh, add your product. So, but you can hear that sizzle. You, you, you can tell that that's uh, oil and pan, it's definitely hot. And that's the other thing, you, you put it in there and, and you, you leave it, right? You don't start moving it no, around. No, leave it alone until you know it's, uh, uh, you can see up on the side of it, it'll start to um, change color a little bit. Um, when that starts to creep up the side a little more, I kind of know it has that sear. So. There's little things that you um, that you pay attention to, and you listen a lot. You know, there's a lot of cooking's done by sound. You could tell by the sound of the pan and how hard that sizzle, how hot that pan I never is. Never knew that. You it's, do it's, by smell, <laughs> by touch, by sound. By you sound. Know, all your senses that you use. In You're cooking. getting it all involved in your cooking. All right. Well, I can imagine how hard that would be with like having to prepare for multiple dishes. You know, like at a restaurant. So you're listening to this. Piece while you're cooking a steak. I mean, that's it's a full orchestra. Yeah, it is. Like, <laughs> this does sound good. You hear that sizzle? I do. That tuna's ready to flip. Oh, look at and that! Nice that is so gorgeous. I mean, there's that golden crust that you want to see, and everything else. So pretty much, our our sauce is done here. Our tuna is going to be uh, ready to slice up. Our mushrooms are pickled. You All know, right. there's a trick too at home. Uh, if you you know when you finish a jar of pickles, save that pickling juice, and you can put in whatever you want: asparagus, mushrooms, and Make yeah, celery pickles. Up celery really pickle. If you oh, want to throw yeah. your own cucumbers in there, you can make, throw, some, yeah, make your own pickles. cucumbers. Absolutely. <laughs> Especially in summertime when the garden's uh, definitely abundant. Oh, fresh, yeah. Great idea. So we're gonna get some nice slices of this tuna. How that's gorgeous. Bright Look red at that. it is, and that is absolutely beautiful, John. Oh my gosh, is this something we can get at uh, Vernice? I have not served this on the menu. This was totally inspired by. Uh, Bourbon Barrel Foods and, and Matt Jamie today. And this is wonderful. Also, what's great about being in this neighborhood in Crescent Hill, um, you know, the Green Triangle area that they do uh, support, um, you know, the big recycling efforts here, and the Billy Goat Garden over on Payne Street. Uh, I even have a, a garden over there and oh, grow some of my own fresh produce and have a little bit of <clears throat> urban garden uh, next and behind to the restaurant. So uh, I've tossed uh, my pickled mushrooms with uh, some snow pea shoots. Wow. And uh, I've taken some of the soy sauce and uh, we reduced it uh, with some sugar to give it a little more of a viscosity. And it's kind of almost like a teriyaki. And we're just gonna drizzle a little bit over the top here. And then uh, we have some toasted soy nuts that I'm just gonna garnish with. And Usually we'll do this as an appetizer, wow. but we'll very healthy dish too. Wow, that bigger. looks absolutely fabulous, John. Oh my gosh. That's a fresh steak on some fresh fish, but the big question is how does it taste? Well, coming up next, a lucky studio audience member is gonna have a chance to take a taste. Secrets of Little Chefs here at Kitchen Studio at Bourbon Barrel Foods, where John Veronese has been revealing his secrets to the soy glazed ahi tuna. Looks fantastic, but it's time to take a taste to see the true testament of well, how is it really? Tony is absolutely, here. Nice to see absolutely. you. One of our great studio audience members here, Tony. I know the group you're with had a chance to purchase a package through BIAC. Right. That's the Brain Injury Alliance of Kentuckyana, and we're great supporters of many charities across uh, Kentuckyana, and uh, we're glad you're here. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate. You have won the chance to uh, take a taste first. Everybody's going to have a chance. Don't, don't throw anything just yet. You're all going to have a chance to take a taste, but Tony's up first. Why don't you dig in? It and couldn't have been a better selection. I just love ahi tuna so much. Well, you'll be a great judge of this. Uh, made with fresh products, made with some of the yeah. bourbon barrel foods here. We saw the uh, salts, the peppers, the soy sauce. 
Mm. Fantastic. Yeah? Excellent. Is Excellent. It, is it worth another bite? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's two thumbs up there, Tim. What do you say we make a little something to go with that? Absolutely. Tony, thank you. I'll tell you thank what. You. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate your uh, support. Uh, yeah, we do. You know, John, you have uh, featured a lot of jazz music combos at your restaurant, and I thought, you know what? I've got to come up with a special cocktail, and this is what I call my jazzed up Manhattan, so to speak, and it's going to be a little bit different. Starts out shaker and ice, uh, traditional Manhattan, of Somebody course, bourbon. Told you I must have liked Manhattan. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> You're going to love this one, I'll tell you what. So I'm going to put in about uh, two ounces or so of uh, Woodford Reserve. I like the orso. Yeah, that's my orso <laughs> portion. That goes in. And, and then, of course, uh, sweet vermouth. Again, still traditional Manhattan. That goes in about an ounce of uh, sweet vermouth. And then this is where we start jazzing it up, okay? Right. I'm going to put in about a half ounce of uh, orange liqueur. That's going to go in. The orange will work very nice with this. And then here's the special. Bitters usually goes into a Manhattan. Uh -huh. But I'm going to use this uh, spiced cherry bitters that Bourbon Barrel Foods makes. Cherry orange works very well. Oh, it's a great combination. Nice combination? Yes, yes. I'm From a chef's this. standpoint? Oh, I love that. We're, we're uh, doing it. And you know what? I give it a good about three or four uh, drops of that. Don't hold back on the bitters, especially when they're this tasty. We'll give this a good shake, John. Then I've used uh, a cherry, but this is uh, a natural cherry, and uh, cherry herring that's been uh, marinated. A good shake. And John, we're gonna pour this right into our chilled uh, cocktail glass. As you can see we have a little bit of ice chunks in the top from good shaking. There it goes. All right, let's see how we did. Uh, all right, cheers. The jazzed Salute. up Manhattan. Here we go. Well, it looks good. And how appropriate, oh. yeah? Oh, I'm telling you. Refreshing. Yeah. Your cocktails are always inspired by the restaurant often, and because of the jazz that they have there, that's how you inspired this uh, that's jazzed exactly, up Manhattan. That's exactly it. And I know that uh, John has a great bourbon selection there, and uh, you know a great bar, by the way, and, and uh, award-winning bartender and cocktails that you guys make. And I thought, i got to do something special. Let's jazz up my Manhattan. That's our cocktail, but we start, we're going to start cooking now. What do we have over here, John? All right. We're going to do our bacon-wrapped pork tenderloin. Ooh. And we're going to use... Uh, the bourbon barrel smoked salt and pepper. But first we're gonna create this butternut squash and goat cheese gratin. Now uh, this is your butternut squash, but you also have these uh, actually really nicely uh, peeled. Yes, and- um, Like a so mandolin or something? We, we've peeled it and then uh, actually uh, we use a meat slicer. Oh, that's even better if you have To one. get it nice and uh, thin. And that's kind of the secret of my gratin. While our cream is uh, heating up here, we could start with um, making the bourbon sorghum and dried cherry chutney that we're going to serve on top of this pork tenderloin. So we're going to use some more of uh, Matt Jamie's product. And, and this is the uh, so sorghum? Which yeah, we're going to start with some sorghum wow. in the pan. Oh, And you know what? A lot of people don't realize, I mean, sorghum grows great here in the state of Kentucky. I mean, it's it's really uh, related to the sugar cane. It's actually a grass. It's our maple syrup. Well, and we have uh, the sorghum festival right down in Washington oh County. Oh my gosh, right? there you go. There you go. We got bourbon festival, sorghum <laughs> festival. We got all <laughs> that's kinds all we of need. We, <laughs> that's what we do. That's it done. <laughs> so we're going to add some sugar. And just a little bit of bourbon in here. Now the goat cheese too, another uh, texture that going yeah, into well, the cream. Yeah, adds, adds a nice little uh, tanginess to the, to the sweet potatoes and helps kind of uh, makes the dish a, a little more savory. And we're going to generously season this with the salt and pepper. And I always over season my cream when I do my gratins because you have to think about all the flavor you have to disperse with that much potato or this much butternut squash. So when you're seasoning your cream, you got to think about how much volume of, of this that you're seasoning too, and it's uh, really important. So we could just pour that in there. And you can see our sauce back here is wow, already getting some tight bubble bubbles. And... I'm going to put it on um, a slow simmer. When the bubbles become really tight like this, it let me know that a lot of the uh, water has been kind of cooked out and it's probably at the thickness that I'm looking for. Uh, when they're very loose bubbles, it still has a lot of water in it. Uh, so that's what you're reducing out. We can now just that's our, a secret. We can add our cherries here and, and kind of let it set. The, at the last. But our, the, oh, this helps get it all coated. By the yeah, way, so you're, the hands you're, are the best mixing tool going. You're getting, you're getting uh, the cream between all the layers and that's really gonna help it cook. Uh, 
the neat part about that too is I was able to put hot cream in there and still put my hands in there because I have enough product that's going to really help um, cool that cream down. And then we're just going to try to, when you put it in the pan, that you're going to just kind of shift it around with your hands and get it to try to eventually lay flat. And when you push in here too, you could kind of feel where the open voids are. Uh, you, you try to get it to where there's a product in all parts of that pan. You know, pretty much here you're gonna cover cover with foil which, and place it in the oven here. John, we're gonna let that cook, but when we come back from the commercial break, we're gonna finish up that dish and we've got a lot more to share as we wrap up the show right here from Kitchen Studio at Bourbon Barrel Foods. We'll be right back. Secrets of Louisville Chefs here at Kitchen Studio at Bourbon Barrel Foods. We're glad you're here and we're glad Chef John Veronese is here as well. He's been sharing his secrets to several items, including that ahi tuna earlier. And now we're rolling on with, uh, John, what you've called a Kentucky-inspired pork tenderloin. And this looks fantastic. We've started with the al gratin and the pork tenderloin I see there is coming up next. Well, here we're going to take a, a pork tenderloin that we've cleaned up. You want to take the silver skin off of it. And I'm going to season with the, the Bourbon Barrel smoked salt here. And that's a great secret too because that silver skin is just chewy and it's real easy, right? Just kind of take your uh, uh, little paring knife, knife, and, knife and, and just and clean it off, off just like with the uh, beef tenderloin. Here's another secret, uh, Kevin. Look at this. And then uh, bacon. 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 Everything bacon makes better it better. Bacon. Yeah, don't miss a spot. <laughs> no, no. More bacon the better here. I mean, you see I'm going to have four slices of bacon on this little, little piece of pork here. And again, just kind of. <laughs> I think there's going to be more bacon than pork when we're all done with this. So you've done it right. Overlapping. This is good. And then we're going to stud it with some of the cracked smoked pepper here. And then I have a, a technique that's kind of new, a little more scientific. We're going to use an immersion circulator to cook this pork tenderloin. You don't have to do this at home. I know well, some home goodness. cooks are. That's a are, big word. Are immersion <laughs> circulator. <laughs> some of right. our home cooks are venturing into it. They sell the products at uh, um, oh, William Sonoma. Sonoma. Yeah, I saw that. And style is called sous vide. It was created a long time ago and it's cooking under pressure. So when you get this, you're going to take your uh, uh, food saver at home, you know, put it in the bag and you're going to seal it up. And we're pretty much boiling in water. But what this does is you can see on the temperature gauge here, it cooks to the precise temperature. So this is already at the temperature that I want it. And okay. we're going to take it over here. And again, um, I have a hot saute pan. Uh, the only thing we have really left is that we want our bacon crispy. So, so this is already cooked, but basically what you're doing here with the hot pan is uh, crisping that bacon just to give it a little texture. Yes. Okay. And if you're doing this at home and you wanted to do it in advance, that you could do this process here and you take it out and you chill it in an ice bath and you could wait to the next day and then get to this process and put it in the oven. All you're gonna do is hold it in the oven a little longer. We cook this at uh, 145 degrees, which is kind of dead center uh, in medium. Once you get it in the oil here and you get that first sear on that side, you just take it, flip it over, and we're gonna put it in our oven. Probably for about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, Meanwhile, we put our gratin in before. The gratin potato takes about an hour to cook in the oven. Uh, when you pull it out, cover the top with Parmesan cheese and then put it back in the oven and let it brown a little bit. And when it's done... Oh, this is gonna be good, Tim. I can't wait. It's like the, the unveiling. <laughs> I know. Oh. And look at this, somebody cut it up for me. Too. Oh, look it's at that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's magic. That's wow. Magic oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> And when the pork's done out of the oven, you'll have your nice crispy sides here. I thought for a little color, we'd add some nice brocco broccoli rabe or broccolini here. And I'm gonna take a, a couple of wow. our gratin squares here. And you just sauteed the uh, broccoli rabe there? Yep, a little bit of a olive bit. oil, and I used the bourbon salt and pepper to season it. And then we're just gonna cut up our pork tenderloin here. And you're right. I mean, look how, I mean, this is perfectly done from this end piece that was small to even that center cut piece that's thick. I mean, perfect. And you can do that with fish too, right? Sous vide? Uh, yes. You can cook fish you as well. You can cook as... any product in there, vegetables in there. Oh, and there's that uh, glaze. 
Yep, or uh, dried oh, cherry sorghum. Oh, man, look at that. Yeah, I'm seeing it from Coarse here. Coarse bourbon in there. And that's sorghum. Oh, so kind of a nice, sweet, cherry, beautiful. Good gosh. That's an art piece, isn't it, Kevin? I mean, look at that. That's, yes, the one that's about to get destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> Edible art. <laughs> All right, and there's oh our uh, bacon wrap pork tender. That is incredible. That is absolutely fabulous. You bet. If you're looking for those recipes that John has created here today, you can find them. They're easy to find on our website at New Local TV. There you'll find a complete restaurant guide, the recipes, and some of our shows. Full episodes, in fact. NewLocalTV.com for Tim Laird. I'm Kevin Harnett. On behalf of all of us at BMB Productions, we'll see you next time on Secrets of Louisville Chefs. Thank <laughs> you.